Hey y'all, this is BG Codes and I am Brad Garropy. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Plop, a code generator for your projects. Uh, Plop is fairly unopinionated about what it can generate. It can generate any language, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript, or any kind of file, a React component, a storybook story, a jest test, a markdown file, it doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do in this video is take an example project that a lot of us are familiar with the Gatsby starter blog and add plop into this project to generate new blog posts. So I have it cloned down to my machine already. And the very first thing we're going to have to do is install plop as a dev dependency. This will take a second. So uh, plop is essentially based on the idea of generators. Uh, per plop configuration, you can define multiple generators. For instance, if you want to define a generator for a React component, another generator for a test, or another generator for a storybook story, or a generator that does all three. Looks like plop is now installed. In order to run plop, we should add it to the NPM scripts. We'll make a script called plop that just runs plop. And let's go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, this should bring up the basic command line, but of course we haven't actually defined a configuration. It says error, no plop file found. To configure plop, that name is funny, you need to create a plop file.js at the root of your project. Now, all this file is, uh, is um, an exported function that takes in plop as an argument and then defines its different actions uh, and generators and helpers right here. So uh, at the base of plop are generators. And what we want to do is add a generator to plop. You use the global plop object, call the set generator function, and the very first thing you give it is a name. So we're trying to generate a blog post. So we'll call it post. And next up, it takes an object full of arguments. Three things. Uh, it takes a description to describe the generator that uh, we've got. It takes prompts, which can be uh, many, and actions, which also an array. So we are trying to generate a blog post. And the way blog posts look in this Gatsby blog look like this. It's got the front matter at the top and then your markdown content here. So we want to kind of scaffold this out. Maybe we can just kind of scaffold out uh, the front matter and maybe some fake lorem ipsum or something. So we'll say as a description, generate a Gatsby starter blog post. Now, in order to generate this post, we're going to need to collect some information from the user. For instance, the title and the description. And we need to get that information from the user somehow. That's where this prompts comes in. Plop uses inquire.js under the hood, which is, if you've ever seen those very fancy command line tools that ask a question and then prompt for a response. So we can define our own prompts here. The very first thing we have to say is the type. We'll be using basic input prompts. That is, after the question is posed to the user, the user enters in a plain old string and that is returned back. Uh, after that, you give it a name. What is the name of the variable where this answer is gonna be stored? In this case, this will be the title. And finally, um, we're going to be giving this a message and this is what question is actually asked of the user. So we'll say like, what do you want to title this post? And in our example, we'll see we have title that we want to ask the user for and description. So we'll duplicate this, add in description, and let's change this message to what is this post about? And let's go ahead and run plop, npm run plop. Now, typically, you give the name of the generator here, but in our case, we only have a single generator, and so plop knows to run this generator. 
So what we should see here is now our prompt starting to come through. What do you want to title this post? My first post. And what is this post about? Tutorials. Great. Nothing happened because we haven't actually defined any actions. Actions take the answers from the prompt given by the user and then does something with it. This can create directories, create files, modify files, template out files, whatever you want. And actions is set up very similar to prompts. It takes an uh, object and the very first thing is a type. So plop has a couple of built-in actions and the most common of them is add. This adds a file. And the second thing it takes is a path. So if you look at this Gatsby blog, um, all these are under content, blog, and then the folder name of the post. So let's make a file, content, blog, example, index.md. We'll see if we run plop again with some test data, foo, and then bar, this does actually create the example directory with an index.md file and nothing inside of it. So how do we put data in this file? Plop uses handlebars as a templating language to inject data into any files. Now remember, handlebars is kind of specific to HTML or it was made for HTML templating, but Plop uses it very generally. You can use handlebars to actually template any plain text that you want. So in this case, we're gonna use it to template Markdown. So a template is just a handlebars file. So let's go ahead and create one. I'll make a templates directory and make a template called front matter and maybe post.md. And here, what we wanna do is mimic what they've done in Gatsby. So let's try this out, my first post and the description will be like, isn't it great? So now what plop is going to do is it's going to take that template file located in templates. Whoops, that shouldn't be marked down. That should be a handlebars file. All your templates are written in handlebars. And it's going to take this file and it's going to populate the data given in prompts. Of course, we don't have any template data yet. We just want to make sure that this is actually working. So again, we'll go foo bar. Now we should have example created then index.md and the exact content of our post.handlebars. It copied it into verbatim as we did no substitutions. Now let's make this a little bit more dynamic. The way these templates work is they're handlebars files. And if you're familiar with handlebars, they use the double curly braces to indicate substitution. So let's do that for both the title and the description. Now you might be asking, where, where is this coming from? The data gathered in prompts, the names are passed down as an object into the handlebar templates. So because we have a, a name with a title, that title variable is available in the handlebars template to substitute that data. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we run plop again and we title the post hello and the description is world, this is going to generate a new directory called example index.md file in there with the title of hello and description of world. You see how that substitution actually took place. Now, the next step. Right now we have the path hard-coded to be in the example folder. That's not what we want. We really want this to be in the folder of title. Uh, it might be surprising, but handlebars, this path is actually run through handlebars as well so that you can do dynamic injection here. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this one more time. And I want to show you a trick. Instead of answering the prompt every single time, Plop actually allows you to 
enter in command line arguments for each of these prompts. It knows that title is the first one and description is the second one. So we can actually put our title in the first one and our description in the second one. So let's say my very own title and the description will be my very own description. It knows the first argument is the title and the second is description. So now we have a new directory called my very own title and an index.md file with the title and description populated properly. Now, one thing here that's a little off, most of these other folders are done in slugs and you could either write your own JavaScript to do some of this or Plop has built in helpers. Uh, Handlebars has a notion of helpers that are kind of transformers on these variables. And Plop has one built in called dash case. So think of dash case as the name of a function and title is the information passed into it. I kind of like to think it as like, um, like const dash case is equal to a function that takes in a title and then does some stuff. That's how I like to view it. But what this is going to do is essentially it's going to slugify the title. So we'll delete the old post and we'll run this again. My very own title and my very own description. You'll notice that when this post is now created again, we have a slugified version of the title. Okay. Now there's one more thing that we might want to improve. We'll notice that we're still hard coding this date. That's not good. Um, we probably don't want to ask the user to enter it in either. We should probably set a sane default and, and say, let's use today's date. And so each action takes in an additional object called data, which is just a bunch of keys and values that are merged with the prompt answers and passed into the handlebars template file. So what I'm saying is this data object could have a date property that we could populate with a date. Let's bring this up to speed. 2020 today is July, what, 9th? And now if we generate this again, we'll actually see the date get populated in there. But of course, hard coding this is not what we want to do. Oh, <laughs> whoops. So we also need to update this handlebars template. My VS code is frozen. Great. Okay. We want to update this handlebars template to date. Remember this data object is, is merged with the prompt answers and then passed into the handlebars template. So any property inside of this data object is available just like the prompts that you defined before. Let's try this again. So here we go. My very own title is the name of the directory. You have the title is my very own title. The description is my very own description and a date that is the date that we set. Now let's make this a little bit nicer. You don't have to just put a string here. You can write a JavaScript function, do whatever you want. So Gatsby uses uh, the ISO string format. So let's just make a new date object, convert it to an ISO string. That should give us a, a date and time of uh, something later than 1203, I suppose. Uh, plop is going to fail because the file already exists. I'll delete it and run it again. Now we have, looks like 332.21, and, and that's right. It's 1032 where I'm at, um, minus the time zone difference, which is a seven hour GMT difference. Perfect. 
So now we've substituted our very own title, date, and description using the handlebars template defined in the plot file. Let's see um, the, the actual website now. Look at this. Our blog post here, my very own title, is live on the website, published on July 10th, which is the date that was generated, and this is the fake content that we put in. So this is just the beginning of Plop. Um, you can further extend and customize with your own plugins, your own custom actions, your own custom generators, and you can really uh, generate anything you'd like. It just depends on how creative you are. Um, maybe I'll make a second video to go into how to load Plop NPM packages to extend the functionality. Let me know if you're interested. Thanks for watching. This has been BG Codes. I am Brad Garropy. Catch you all in the next one. Later.